And, and, and I'm not sure that says anything positive about higher education. But I, I do want to point out, you heard a little bit of theology in, in those answers that I gave. I do want to point out that the views I articulate there are actually pretty widely held. Uh, it was a, a letter to the journal Nature about two years ago that pointed this out. Um, many of us in biology know this very famous quote from one of the great evolutionary biologists of the 20th century, Theodosius Dobzhansky. And Dobzhansky wrote in an article in 1973, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. It's absolutely true. But it, the letter writer pointed out in the very same article, Dobzhansky went on, he said, you know, it's wrong to hold creation and evolution as mutually exclusive alternatives. I, Dobzhansky, am a creationist and an evolutionist. Why? Because evolution is God's or nature's method of creation. And Dobzhansky said the creator made the living world not by caprice, supernatural fiat, I would say not by intelligent design, but by evolution propelled by natural selection. And again, it's a more common view than one might think. Um, summer before last, one of the most famous molecular biologists in the world, Francis Collins, the director of the Human Genome Project, wrote an extraordinary book called The Language of God. Um, Francis is an uncompromising evolutionist. You work on the human genome, you have to be, because the evidence is every there, everywhere there, but he's also a deeply committed evangelical Christian. And anyone who thinks that these two points of view are not compatible, you ought to read Collins' book, and I think it will open your eyes in that particular respect. Um, who really put this, and I think the very best perspective, um, right after the Dover trial, was a columnist for the Washington Post. And the columnist was Charles Krauthammer. Now, if you don't know him, Krauthammer is probably the most conservative columnist writing for the Washington Post. And when George Will writes for the same newspaper, that's, that's, that's saying something. But look at what he wrote after the Dover trial. Phony theory, false conflict. Intelligent design foolishly pits evolution against faith. And I love the way that Krauthammer pit this. He said, how ridiculous to make evolution the enemy of God. What could be more elegant, more simple, more brilliant? more economical, more creative, indeed more divine than a planet with millions of life forms, distinct and yet interactive, all ultimately derived from accumulated variations in a single, double-stranded molecule, pliable and fecund enough to give us mollusks and mice, Newton and Einstein, even if it also gave us the Kansas Board of Education. <laughs> And, and I think the way that Krauthammer put it really was very well. Um, and, and, and I searched for a way to end the, this, this, this lecture with an even more ringing quote. And I have to say, you know, there's been good stuff said in this century, good stuff written in the 20th century, and I apologize for this. I had to go back to the 19th century to find something that really sums up my own view of evolution. And this statement was penned by the very person who kept this notebook. And I don't know if you've ever seen this notebook page before, but it's an extraordinary piece of paper. And the reason for that is it's very rare in the history of science. You can point to one sheet in somebody's notebook, and you can say right there on that page is one of the great discoveries in the history of science. Now, this notebook page was written in 1837, and he wrote at the top of the page, I think, then he drew a diagram of a sort that no one else had ever drawn before, along with a set of explanatory notes added at two times. Um, this is an extraordinary discovery, and it took him two decades more to get up the courage to write this out and explain it to everybody else. Now, what did this guy think about evolution? Did he think it was depressing or demeaning? Did he think that evolution brought us down? The answer is absolutely not. At the end of a very famous book that you've all heard of, he said, you know, I don't find evolution to be depressing at all. In fact, he wrote, there is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that while this planet has gone cycling on, according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most wonderful and most beautiful, have been and are being evolved. That's the concluding sentence of The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. And ladies and gentlemen, I think those are words to live by. Thank you very much.